He met me two days ago and uh, uh, tell me how was I different perceptively and how am I in real to you? Um, you're totally different between who you are on the internet or for what I knew through Facebook or through short conversation we had together to what who you are in real. Um, actually, um, you are a very quiet and peaceful person. When one sits next to you uh, and with you, um, there is a kind of uh, relax. You can be really relaxed as a man with you. I feel really relaxed. And uh, also, you bring all the conversation we had all the people we met were being men and women because we had a chance to meet as well very interesting men as very interesting women. And everything, every time, it is a very rewarding conversation. Not just conversation, communication. For every time we speak, we learn. How trivial it might sound, we learn. And we learn in such broad topics that one realizes there are no trivial things. Everything is interrelated. From schooling, from what you learn from the ABC to about how you're going to go to the moon and how you're going to breathe on the moon without an apparatus with it and realize that through our conversation because this world in which you are into or the, what you're trying to do is about getting all kind of competency together and making aware of each other's presence to enrich each others about their own stage of creation to understand that what they create or what they do or on the process to do will impact others. And if each is aware that whatever he does, it's not just about money or just about capital or about in being rich, but enrichment of everybody out of all human beings about becoming independent. In a certain way, you make happen that the more independent you are toward each other's, the more you can bring to each other's. Because only by being independent can you actually share something which is yours and not feel like it's been stolen from you or like it will be still stole from you or deprive you and that's what extraordinary be sitting with you because one doesn't feel threatened one feels like he's part of something and this is what you are capable to do how can I improve myself how you could improve yourself by taking time for yourself what, what should I do um, I could say what you should do, but it bothers me to tell you what you should do because you're not going to do it. And so it makes me feel awkward about it because it bothers me not to find the right words to make you to want to do it. Well, still go for it. Let's try. You you are not aware of your body. You are not aware of your physical being. You are not aware... You might be aware of your needs, but not of your physical beings. Um, and therefore, uh, you don't take in consideration... Your sh your, you represent a volume. You are a volume. You are a mass. And this mass is moving. But this mass needs to be controlled. 
in control. And this is what you're lacking, to be truly in control of your volumes. You are probably very much in control of your thoughts and minds, but you are not in control of your physical being. And, for example, just the fact that I was explaining to you how to breathe and you can't remember. Or I was telling you how to walk a certain way in a specific environment and you cannot remember. It's because you have no interest of your physical being. You are not... You don't want to take the time of your presence, of your own volume. And that's, I find it uh, too bad, because if you be aware, you know, sitting with you, I speak and I talk to you, but I could almost sit with you without needing to speak at all, how at ease I feel with you. Thank you, Dibor.